Today I want to talk a little bit about Pokemon Sword and Shield because today the review embargo has lifted. And no, not every review in the world that's going to come out for this game is coming out today. There'll be people that review it later. There'll be YouTubers and, and other people who get the game on launch on Friday uh, that end up reviewing the game either over the weekend or next week or however long it takes them to complete the game and 100% or whatever they feel like they need to do in order to review the game. Uh, right now, it does stand as an 84 on Metacritic, but this is just based on 10 critics so far. There's bound to be 30, 40, 50 plus count in the end. So this early scoring isn't indicative of much. But uh, I have taken some time to actually read some of the reviews. And I know that this should mean that I can't review the game myself because now that I've read other people's reviews, uh, it'll obviously impact my opinion. And I'm but I think I might review this game anyways. Uh, down the line, it's going to be a little bit. It, it's not going to be anytime soon. We're, we're talking, um, you know, early 2020 or something that I might I might finally throw out a review of Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. But uh, I, I I was just kind of glancing at, at, through these reviews because I'm curious what they say. Like, what about it makes it like? Why is IGN giving this game a 93? Uh, whereas Nintendo Life's given it an 80, whereas Daily Star's given it a 60. Uh, wh why is there such a wide variance in some of these scores? Uh, and you would figure a Nintendo place like Nintendo Life would be more likely to score it favorably. Uh, and I'm just going to read uh, some of the summaries uh, from these critic reviews on Metacritic uh, just because I, I feel like this is a good way of teasing uh, a little bit of what the game's about without... Uh, destroying this game for people uh, and spoiling too much. So IGN, as an example, says Pokemon Sword and Shield are the best games in the series, streamlining its most tedious traditions without losing any of the charm. Um, I think that's going to be... I, I think that's what Pokemon Sword and Shield's trying to do. It's trying to be the best. IGN thinks it's the best, uh, but that doesn't necessarily make it the best for each individual person. For some people, the fact that you can't have every Pokemon in the game uh, is already going to make it not be the best. You know, that's, that's just a, a personal desire for a lot of gamers. But moving on, Games Radar uh, says, Gameplay tweaks and attention to detail make Pokemon Sword and Shield the most compelling Pokemon world to date. So they're kind of agreeing with IGN. They gave it a 90. GameSpot gave it a 90 as well. And they said, In collecting, battling, and exploring Sword and Shield, cut out the bloat and focus on what makes these pillars of the Pokemon game so captivating in the first place. You're not held back by overly complicated back-end systems or hoops to jump through from the outset you can start wandering the galar region seeing its new pokemon and trying out its new battle strategies with very little in your way this leaves you free to enjoy what pokemon is all about and that makes for an incredibly strong showing for the series proper debut on switch and a lot of that makes pokemon sword shield sound like exactly what i want pokemon to be um, i do feel pokemon as a series has been a little bloated Pokemon as a series has made people jump through a lot of hoops and made systems a little bit more complicated than they needed to be. And that's one reason why I enjoyed Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee so much. In particular, uh, Let's Go Eevee because that's the version I had. Um, I, I really enjoyed these games because it made me uh, appreciate some of the simpler things in Pokemon and not worry so much about some of the complicated stuff. And while a lot of those complications are reintroduced into this game, um, a lot of the other bloat was cut and that I think is going to make a more enjoyable experience for me. So I think GameSpot's review might be the best one to represent um, my feelings um, in terms of making me interested in these games. Because, again, I've been playing Pokemon since the very beginning. I stopped after, I think, Gen 4 or Gen 5, but um, I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting back into the series for you know on a home console, at least on my TV. Uh, first time I've really done that since the Super Game Boy back in the day. But... Uh, Let's move on. Uh, Everi.it. I've never heard of this place, but they're they're included on Metacritic. It says Pokemon Sword and Shield are complex and convincing games, a solid plot, a more varied gameplay, and a very thoughtfully created level design are the hallmarks of this new Pokemon generation. They gave it an 85. Now, Nintendo Life, I mentioned earlier, they gave it an 80. They said Pokemon Sword and Shield succeeded in bringing some new ideas to the table, but they're also somewhat guilty of not pushing things far enough. What's done right is done right, but what's done wrong feels like it comes from a decade-old design document. There are moments contained within that are the best the series has ever been, but this joy is at times spoiled by contrasting moments that left us disappointed and did not match up with the rest of what the rest of these games can offer. What we've got here is an experience full of highs and lows, from the unadulterated wonder and joy of seeing a brand new Pokemon in a stadium full of cheering crowds, to the monotonous and dragged out dialogue we just wanted to skip. So, 
it's interesting. Nintendo Life's actually been pretty harsh about the game. Um, I, uh, I I think this is going to be a, a polarizing experience. I, I think is what I'm getting from these reviews. Either you're not as critical about Pokemon and you end up loving it, or you are pretty critical and you're going to not rate this game maybe as high as you think. Now, Pokemon games, if you're actually looking at you know game review scores on the whole you know especially on metacritic where we're getting this stuff from uh pokemon games in general aren't like these 90 plus experiences they're always in the 80s pokemon let's go pikachu i think was a 79 let's go eevee was an 80 i don't know why there's a one point difference but it just is what it is um uh, you know i think uh there's like pokemon y or pokemon x one of those are like one of the highest scoring pokemon games like an 87 or an 88 uh but pokemon games in general are not like these 90 plus experiences anyways in terms of reviews it's just a really popular series that's easy to get into. Uh, one of the easiest to get into RPGs out there. Yes, Pokemon's an RPG. I mean, I, know, I think everyone knows that, but it's not talked about, I think, enough. That it's that it's basically um, a beginner's guide to RPGs. Does that make sense? But it's a beginner's guide that can get complicated if you want it to. I don't know. I mean, maybe that's just my viewpoint on Pokemon, and I'm about to get blasted for it. Uh, moving on, EGM gave it an 80, and they said the first new generation Pokemon games to release on a proper home console does not disappoint. New features like Dynamaxing and the Wild Area are fun additions that make the experience of becoming a Pokemon champion still feel fresh. It's just a shame that the Game Freak didn't lean on the new features more than they did. So, um, kind of a ho-hum review there, you know? Yeah, they liked it, but, you know, it could have been better. Daily Star now, these are the ones that, that so far have given it a 60. And it says, Pokemon Sword and Shield are not bad games. So it starts out with, hey, look, these games are bad despite our score. But fun character arcs and inventive creative designs of the new Pokemon are often offset by poor pacing and restrictive world design. The world of Galar is charming and is a Pokemon interpretation of Britain I've dreamed of since I was a kid. But between gating what Pokemon you can catch behind gym badges, some half-baked route slash city designs, and a modest amount of post-game content, Sword and Shield can only be called a good Pokemon game, but not a great one. And obviously, uh, they used the full scale because they literally said it's a good game. Uh, but they gave it a 60, uh, and for a lot of people, 60 is like, everybody panic, but uh, some some people actually use the full scale and mean the full scale. It's not that anything that's not an 80 or a 90 is a bad game. So uh, I just find it very interesting going through those reviews, and there's more, um, and there's going to be more cropping up throughout the day. You're going to probably see plenty of YouTubers as well coming out with their reviews, uh, and I, I got to say that um, setting aside all of the Game Freak BS, we, we, we've had a lot of criticism over the, the, the Pokedex. We've had a lot of criticism at times over the art direction or some of the animations. We've also had a lot of uh, concern over Game Freak employees being upset, maybe not being upset. The Thank You Game Freak movement and the Thank You Game Freak movement actually getting mocked in a lot of ways because people think it's hilarious that fans need to thank a company for making them rich because that's what fans did is we made Game Freak the Pokemon company and everyone else rich. Uh, people wondered if they should be mad at Nintendo. People wondered if they should be mad at the Pokemon company or mad at Game Freak. Or if we should even be mad at all, maybe we should just wait till the games come out, judge the games on their own merit. You know, we're so focused on all these things when none of us have actually played the games to know if it's worth cutting Pokemon and all this stuff. Like, it, it, it's a lot of give and take. And Pokemon is just a, a polarizing franchise. It just is. When I have spoken out against Pokemon in the past, when I say spoken out against, I'm talking about why I fell out of love with Pokemon, which I'm not even 100% sure exactly uh, what did it. Um, and, and how much I love Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. I don't know if you guys remember, last year I was praising Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee heading into launch, and I praised it after playing it, and people were blasting me. Pokemon fans were blasting me for my love of the Let's Go games. And it, it just felt so strange to be attacked in so many ways by Pokemon fans. And then to watch these Pokemon fans turn around and be like, oh, well, Gen 8's coming. And then attacking Gen 8 before it even gets here. It, it, it does feel weird. It feels like the Pokemon fan base is a little fickle. Now, this isn't 
everyone, of course. A lot of you guys out there, a lot of you Pokemon fans that are, are patiently waiting for your favorite reviewer to get the review out or are picking this game up day one. You, you, you bought the Switch Lite bundle or whatever the case might be. Um, some of you guys are going to be perfectly happy and fine and, and happy-go-lucky and everything's going to be great. And I know a lot of kids that play it aren't going to be as critical and all that. So, But, but it, it's just interesting watching the Pokemon fan base do what they do because, see, I've been really tight and close with the Zelda fan base for a long time and I've seen the Zelda fan base over react to things but even then we didn't seem to attack individuals for having different opinions uh i you know before breath of the wild zelda 2 the adventure of link was my favorite zelda game and ocarina of time wasn't even in my top 10 and there were people that thought i was stupid for having those opinions but they didn't attack me over it they, they, they didn't come at me and you know you know yell at me about those opinions they just said why and then when i explained why they're like oh okay well i mean we can't argue with your personal opinion and what you enjoy in games and all of that you know they can disagree and i think that's kind of the same thing with pokemon here where it's okay to be critical it's okay to not to, to be unhappy with what happens in Sword and Shield. Maybe you don't like Dynamaxing. Maybe you're really unhappy over the Pokedex. These feelings are okay. But what's also okay is for people to not care about that stuff and to love the game. And I think what ends up happening is you see a clashing of personalities. And this is the internet. And the negative side of everything always seems to get amplified over the positive side. So... I want to kind of give a little positive spin on this as we head into the, the launch of Pokemon Sword and Shield. And that is that these games are going to sell extremely well. These games are going to make a lot of people happy. Uh, for a lot of us, this will be our first time seeing most of these Pokemon, including the new ones, of course, in HD. Because there hasn't been every single Pokemon in HD before. So uh, that's going to be really exciting in that of itself. I guess you, if you count, you know, I mean, actually, no, there hasn't been every single Pokemon. Because I was going to say, even Pokemon Let's Go Peach or Let's Go Eevee, or, or I really should say, even that game plus the Pokemon Let's Go, uh, the phone app doesn't really have every Pokemon. And I know this one doesn't have every Pokemon either. Oh my God, don't remind me. But it's going to have a lot, like 400 Pokemon or whatever it is in HD. Uh, it, it's going to be glorious. We get to fight in stadiums. We get to do a lot of crazy things. And uh, I think that a lot of us are going to come away pretty happy with these games, including myself. Because after all, this is the first true generation of Pokemon I'm deep diving in, really, since Gen 4. And uh, I am looking forward to either falling in love with Pokemon all over again, and this is the game that does it, although I really did enjoy Let's Go, but it, it was Gen 1, and I've been called a Gen 1-er before. Um, or uh, I'm going to, you know, end up not liking the game and maybe figure out what it is about Pokemon that doesn't click with me anymore. Either way, I'm looking really forward to playing this game. I'm not sure which version I'm going to get yet. Probably leaning towards Shield because it's blue, and blue is my favorite color, uh, but we'll see. Uh, if Eric ends up picking up Shield, then I'll probably get Sword. And uh, I, I look forward to having a deeper conversation about Pokemon on a future podcast episode. Um, got some ideas for the podcast coming up, but uh, we'll we'll get into that another day. Anyways, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hopefully uh, you enjoyed this and you're enjoying all the reviews popping up around the internet. Um, and I look forward to talking more Pokemon with you guys once I get a chance to go hands-on with it, hopefully sometime in December. All right, folks, uh, subscribe for more content, and I'll catch you in the next video.